Okay, this is going to be a video on the New American Standard Version of the Bible. I've had some people in the comments talking about um, how the New American Standard Version is a more literal, more accurate translation than the King James Bible. So, um, about a year or so ago, um, I made a... Um, I made a um, kind of a little chart that showed a side by side by side comparison of the King James Version, the Jehovah's Witnesses New Living, or I'm sorry, the New World Translation, and uh, a Bible that my grandmother was using, the New Living Translation, to try to show her that um, her new Living Translation was very similar to the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. So I made this pamphlet. Well, I've seen people in the comments talking about this New American Standard Version. So I went ahead and edited my uh, little chart that I'd made to be the uh, New American Standard that is compared with the New World Translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses and the King James Bible. So let's just go ahead and get into this here. Um, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Um, actually, before I start, I just want to say the where I got these verses from, I actually don't own a paper copy of the New American Standard, um, and I really didn't want to, even if I did, I wouldn't have typed up right out of the uh, paper version of the book, just because I don't want to memorize these uh, verses. Um, so where I got my verses from is uh, Bible Hub. So... Um, that's where I got my New American Standard Version uh, quotations from. So Isaiah 14:12, uh, the only verse in the Bible, in the King James Bible, that uses the term Lucifer, which most people know today to be Satan, another name for Satan. New World Translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses says Shining One, and New American Standard says Star of the Morning. And so you lose a name of Satan, uh, Lucifer, from these new versions. And um, like I said, it's the only verse in the Bible that uses the term Lucifer. So um, kind of weird, especially considering we call Satanists. Another name for Satanists is Luciferians. Well, not in the new version because the term Lucifer is not there. Daniel 3.25, Nebuchadnezzar. Um, after they put uh, Sh Shadrach, M Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, um, Nebuchadnezzar sees a fourth in there, and he says the fourth is uh, the form of the fourth is like the Son of God, because it was the Son of God in there. It was Jesus Christ in there with him. New World Translation, of course, this would be a problem for them because they don't believe Jesus Christ was God, so he couldn't have been in the Old Testament. So they say a son of the gods. And wouldn't you know it, the New American Standard says the same. Uh, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 6. This is a very interesting verse that almost every new version of the Bible twists. If uh, you're um, trying to show somebody these new versions and how they twist things, this is a great verse to show them. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 6. It's a prophecy of Jesus here, we'll see. It says, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Um, then shall he answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Jehovah's Witnesses Bible says, um, What are these wounds between your shoulders? And the New American Standard says, What are these wounds between your arms? So kind of strange there that they both say um, kind of the same thing there. And this is obviously a, a um, prophecy of Jesus Christ and you lose that by changing this verse. Matthew chapter 1 verse 25 um, we'll see if you stick and watch the whole video you'll see at the end here some proof of that the Vatican is behind these new versions and um, of course, the Roman Catholic Church t teaches the um, Immaculate Conception. They teach that uh, the perpetual virginity of uh, 
Mary. Well, the King James Bible says when Jesus was born that she brought forth, forth her firstborn son. And why would you say firstborn unless she had other children? So the new versions change that because they are Catholic, and they change. Um, new uh, New World Translation says just says a son, and what you know it also the New American Standard just says a son. So you lose firstborn. Matthew five twenty two. Uh, the King James Bible has Jesus saying, "But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment." The new versions take out without a cause, which is a problem because um, also here, if you keep reading, whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in uh, danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Well, if you have a problem here, I say see Luke 12.20, so I'm going to go here real fast, Luke 12.20. And in the King James Bible, we'll see it says, But God said unto him, Thou fool. So God calls somebody fool. Um, does that mean he's in danger of hellfire? I think that's what the verse said there at the end. Yeah, hellfire. Uh, no, because God had a cause to call that person a fool. New American Standard also says, God said to him, You fool. So... Back here in Matthew chapter 5, they take out without a cause. Well, it says here, anybody who says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Um, that's a problem. That's a contradiction in, the, in your New American Standard. Matthew chapter 19, verse 17. Um, Jesus uh, said, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? New World Translation, why do you ask me about what is good? New American Standard, why are you asking me about what is good? Uh, that is not what Jesus said. Matthew twenty five thirteen. wherein the son of, the son of man cometh. They take that part of the verse out, both of them. New World Translation and um, New American Standard. Mark two seventeen. this is a weird one. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they take out to repentance. And so when you read it, it sounds like there's something missing. Uh, Job's Witnesses says, I came not to call, I came to call not righteous people, but sinners. New American Standard, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Okay, call them to what? Just call them? Mark ten twenty four, they take out the part of the verse that says, For them that trust in riches, which reads, which then makes the verse read, Children, how difficult is it to enter into the kingdom of God? New American Standard, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? So, uh, what, you get there by your works? Is that what that verse is saying? Mark chapter 11, verse 10, they, com they take out, That cometh in the name of the Lord. Um, don't ask me why. Both of them do. Luke 2.43, they attack the deity of Christ here. Uh, King James Bible says Joseph and his mother knew not of it. And the New World Translation says his parents did not notice it. New American Standard, his parents. King James Bible makes a distinction here that Joseph is not the father of Jesus. You don't have that with the New Versions. This is probably my favorite one. Luke chapter 4, verse 4. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. They take out but by every word of God. And what you end up with is pretty funny. Um, New World Translation, It is written man must not live on bread alone. Okay, what's, what's the point of the verse then? It is written man must not live on bread alone. Uh, but with uh, cheese on the bread, is that what it's missing? I mean, there's something missing in that verse. It's obvious. Um, new, this is my the funny one, though. New American Standard puts it in all capital letters. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone. <laughs> okay. Uh, the problem here 
the big problem here is that is a quotation from uh, the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. And if we go back here, King James Bible, the end of this verse here, uh, what well says here, Man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Um, New American Standard, you would think they wouldn't have this in here if they're not going to quote it in the New Testament, right? But apparently the Jesus of the New Versions doesn't know the Old Testament very well because he only quoted the first half of the ver or the first part of the verse here because they leave out, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So you see a problem there. Uh, Jesus Christ quoted the verse, but he apparently didn't quote the whole thing, or didn't know the whole thing, maybe, apparent, uh, according to these new versions. Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Here again, we saw earlier Lucifer get taken out of the Bible, and now here we see they take out, uh, when Jesus is being tempted by Satan, they take out, get thee behind me, Satan. And I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to why they would take out Satan's name. Um, of course, you know my um, theory behind that would be because the new versions are from Satan. Luke chapter 11, verse 2, um, <clears throat> the, uh, when Jesus is teaching them how to pray, they take out which art in heaven, and they take out thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Take that out, which... Um, kind of attack the earthly kingdom a little bit. That's a pretty good verse there about the, the uh, coming kingdom on earth where Jesus will reign. Here's a pretty sick one here. Luke chapter 23, verse 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, that's the only place in the Bible, the only time the word Calvary shows up, and New, uh, New World Translation, Jehovah's Witness Bible, says skull and... Uh, New American Standard says the skull. So there is no Calvary in the Jehovah's Witness Bible. There's no Calvary in the New American Standard. So when you sing about Calvary, don't you feel kind of uh, guilty that your Bible doesn't say Calvary in it anymore? John chapter 6, verse 47. Here's another strange one. This is another like half a statement, basically, of the new versions. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. New World Translation. But truly I say to you, whoever believes has everlasting life. Uh, believes who? Believes what? It's kind of an empty statement, isn't it? New American Standard. Truly, truly I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. <laughs> yeah. John chapter 8, verse 9. They take out being convicted by their own conscience. Uh, New World Translation takes the whole... I think a whole chunk of John chapter 7 and John chapter 8 out. I forget exactly what verses it is, but it's a whole big chunk. And the New American Standard takes out that part of the verse that I have in bold there. John chapter 9 verse 4 uh, says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Uh, New World Translation says, we must do the works of the one who sent me. And New American Standard, we must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. So that's kind of strange. Here's another pretty weird one. John chapter 10, verse 30. King James Bible, I and my I and my Father are one. New World Translation, I and the Father are one. New American Standard, I and the Father are one. A uh, little bit of an attack on um, the Godhead there, I think. John 16, 16. They take out because I go to the Father, both of them. This one's pretty sick. I just I just uh, found this one. I actually didn't have this one in my original um, uh, chart here when I was uh, comparing the New Living Translation, but I actually looked in the New Living Translation. They do the same thing. This is pretty sick, though. When Jesus uh, is re uh, resurrected and he comes back up and appears to Mary Magdalene, he says to her, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. Uh, New World Translation says, Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me. And, uh, of course, the New American Standard, uh, most literal, most accurate translation, Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me. Now, to stop doing something, don't you have to be doing it? So was Mary Magdalene clinging to Jesus? Uh, no. 
I do not believe she did. The King James Bible, he tells her, touch me not. It doesn't say that she touched him. It just says she was about to hug him or something maybe, and he said, touch me not. And when God tells you not to touch you, I'm guessing she didn't touch him. <laughs> uh, let's see, Acts chapter 4, verse 27. They attack the deity of Christ here. They called, uh, the King James Bible says that Jesus was God's child. Um, the New World Translation says, which of course you would expect this, it calls him his servant. Um, but so does the New American Standard. So pretty interesting. I mean, you say, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, David was the, a servant of, of God. Um, you know, all the prophets were servants of God. It doesn't mean that they were God in the flesh, because they weren't. Acts chapter 9, verse 6, they take out when Paul, when uh, Jesus uh, appears to Paul on the road to Damascus, they take this whole chunk out here of Acts chapter 9, verse 6, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him. And they both take that out, as you can see. Acts chapter 23, verse 9, they take out, let us not fight against God. Okay, I don't know what the deal with that is. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Um, when I first got saved, actually before I was even saved, I started reading the Bible, found this guy on television really early in the morning, Les Feldick, and I really liked the way he taught the Bible, so I started listening to him and listening to some of his studies. And when I first realized that he was using a King James Bible, and everybody in his audience was, I bought one. I bought a note taker's Bible from local church Bible publishers. And I started using that thing. And at one point, Les Feldick, who used the King James but really didn't believe it that, that much, um, or he didn't believe it was perfect, I'll say that. I believe he was saved and, and everything. And he used the right Bible, he just didn't really believe it was perfect. Um, I actually wrote a comment that he made, and he actually said that this second half of Romans chapter 8 verse 1 may not have been uh, actually in the manuscripts. And uh, it says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And I, a few months after I was saved, I was flipping through that Bible and uh, just saw that and just thought, oh, how sick. I didn't even remember writing it. <laughs> so I crossed it out and said, uh, no, it should be there. <laughs> Uh, but you see the Jehovah's Witness Bible takes that out, and so does the New American Standard. Here's another interesting one here, Romans chapter 13, verse 9. They take out, thou shalt not bear false witness. And isn't that interesting? I mean, why take out that? Um, maybe because the new versions bear false witness? Um, I don't know, because they take out whole verses, maybe? They take out words. Um, but you can see here, thou shalt not steal, and then thou shalt not covet, and it should be in between those two. And here you have covet and steal, nothing in between, and covet and steal, and nothing in between. So they take out thou shalt not bear false witness, because they bear false witness. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 28, they take out for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Which is a great, you know, little easy to memorize, you know, part of a verse that you can uh, quote to a lost person. Um, uh, here's another Catholic change. Second Corinthians two fifteen, for we under we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ and them that are saved, and and them that perish. They change that to say are being saved in the Jehovah's Witness Bible and are being saved in the New American Standard. Um, here's another really good one. 2 Corinthians 2.17 For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Interesting, back then during Paul's time there were many that corrupted the word of God. And there is even more today. <laughs> and here are two of them right here. The Jehovah's Witnesses says we are for we are not peddlers of the word of God as many men are. And when you know what the New American Standard says, the exact same thing, peddling the word of God. Not corrupting it, but peddling it. Uh, let's see, Galatians 5.12, uh, 
I would they were even cut off which trouble you. Um, you can, at least to me, what comes to mind is not what the new versions say. Emasculate themselves. Mutilate themselves. Um, interesting. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. Now this one, you can guess why the Jehovah's Witnesses take this part out. Um, it says, in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. And that's a mystery. And it's apparently it's a mystery the Jehovah's Witnesses never got because they don't believe it. Um, and so they take that out, but wouldn't you know it, the New American Standard takes it out too. Interesting. Philippians 2.6 um, Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus didn't think he was robbing God by uh, be equal with him. Because he was God manifest in the flesh. Which we're going to see here in a second. Je uh, Jehovah's Witness Bible says, Gave no consideration to a seizure, namely that he should be equal to God. Um, okay, that I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. To a seizure? <laughs> right. New American Standard. Did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Wow. That's uh, real easy to understand. <laughs> and it definitely does not say the same thing as the King James Bible. Colossians 1.14, they take out through his blood. The reason why your sins are forgiven is because Jesus shed his blood, died on the cross, and rose again. And the new versions uh, twist that and take out through his blood. And the Jehovah's Witnesses do that because they don't believe that Jesus had the blo uh, God's blood in him. And so, why does the New American Standard say the same thing as the Jehovah's Witness Bible? Here's a really good one here. Um, again, attacking the deity of Jesus Christ. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Couldn't be more clear. God was made alive in the flesh. Um... Let's see, Job's Witness Bible says he was man made manifest in the flesh. New American Standard, he who was revealed in the flesh. Okay, um, big problem with that is every person that was ever physically born was manifest in the flesh. That doesn't mean it w that they were God. I mean, I was born, I was manifest in the flesh, but I'm not God. Um, so, why does the New American Standard read like the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible? I don't know. 1 Timothy 6.5 says, Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Today you have the prosperity gospel basically saying, you know, if you're rich, it's because God wants you to be rich, and, you know, don't worry about making a lot of money and things, and even though the Bible says, you know, having food and raiment, let us therewith be content, and, um, oh, what else, uh, do everything in moderation, the love of money is the root of all evil, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the New, uh, New American, or I'm sorry, the Job's Witness Bible says, thinking that godly devotion is a means of gain. That's not the same thing. And they say the same thing here. Suppose that godliness is a means of gain. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, maybe the most important verse in the New Testament to um, learning the Bible, tells you to study. And they say, Job's Witnesses says, do your utmost which has nothing to do with the Bible, be diligent. Also, not real clear that it's talking about studying the Bible, but also it tells you to rightly divide what you study. And the New World Translation says, handling the word of truth aright. I mean, that doesn't sound archaic at all, right? I mean, everybody says aright. <laughs> uh, uh, accurately handling the word of truth. That's the, the uh, New American Standard accurately handling okay does that mean um, handling the, the Bible like uh, don't drop it is that what that means <laughs> second Timothy 3 16 and 17 some interesting things here notice it says in the King James Bible that scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine Jehovah's Witness Bible says teaching and wouldn't you know it so does the New American Standard we got to take that nasty doctrine word out of the Bible. 
might get some people upset. But here's one of the best arguments that the King James Bible is perfect. It says here that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Um, so yeah, if the man of God may be perfect from the scripture, wouldn't the scripture have to be perfect? Couldn't have any errors in it? If there's errors in it, the man could believe the errors and teach the errors. So what do the new versions have to do? They have to change that because they don't believe any Bible is perfect. And the New World Translation says fully competent. And the New American Standard says adequate. Don't you know God wants a, just a good adequate Christian? Not a perfect Christian. Oh, that's funny. Hebrews 10.34 Knowing in yourselves... Um, that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. They take out in heaven, or they take out in heaven, um, basically making it sound like it's talking about earth. Uh, James five sixteen says, "Confess your faults one to another." And these Catholic new versions change faults to sins. So make sure you confess your sins there. First Peter one twenty two they take out through the Spirit. You can see that there. 1 John 4, 3. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. And these new versions don't confess that Jesus came in the flesh because they say, but every inspired statement that does not acknowledge Jesus does not originate with God. That's not what the verse says. It says, confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. New American Standard. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. Uh, but you didn't say, is come in the flesh. And so you're proving that you have the spirit of Antichrist there in your new version. And the verse that tests if you have the spirit of Antichrist. And they fail it. Here's an interesting one here. 1 John 4.19 We love him because he first loved us. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. New version, New World Translation, we love because he first loved us. New American Standard, we love because he first loved us. You gotta take out that nasty word him there, you know. <laughs> first John 5, 7, I think almost everybody's probably familiar with this verse. They take out that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And they take First John 5, 7 and 5, 8 and combine them which is satanic, they take out the Godhead. Revelation 111, they take out saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And you would understand that for the Jehovah's Witnesses because they don't believe Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Um, so they take that out, but so does the New American Standard. Revelation 514 says, uh, or I'm sorry, they take out the end of the verse here, him that liveth forever and ever. You can see that there. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 9, they take out, it says um, at the end here, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them, but fire came down out of heaven and consumed them, and fire came down from heaven and devoured them. They take out fire from God. Interesting. So um, this last part here is just kind of a, I just compiled a, a lot of the work that uh, Brother Brian Denlinger has done for the King James Version. And uh, this is just proof here that the Vatican is behind the new versions of the Bible. It says um, in a council that the Catholic Church had, it says, um, if when the opportunity presents itself and the authorities of the church agree, these translations are made jointly with churches separated from us. They can then be used by all Christians. Um, churches separated from us, you know, like Protestants, like uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons. Uh, Mormons actually use the King James, so I can't say that one, I guess. Uh, Seventh-day Adventists and things, and, you know, all these other churches that are separate from the Catholic Church, supposedly. Um, but then they can be used by all Christians. And you're using a Catholic Bible with a Protestant name. What is missing in Codex B, Vaticanus Manuscript? And you can see the list here. Interestingly enough, they take out Psalm 119, which is uh, 
if, or at least it's missing Psalm 119 because um, that would be the best part of the Bible really to talk about the Word of God so I have to take that out and of course I gotta take out the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation reveals who the whore of Babylon is and uh, that would be the Vatican the Roman Catholic Church number of differences between these two best manuscripts here Vaticanus and Sinaiticus they're the two oldest and best then why do they differentiate between each other 3,000 times in the Gospels 3,000 times they contradict each other. Apocryphal books in Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. This is the number one, uh, what do I want to say? This has got to be the number one proof that the new versions are not of God, that they have a spirit of Antichrist, and that they are a bunch of liars, is they say that they, they are based on the two oldest and best manuscripts which, of course, the one says Vatican in the name of it. I mean, do you think God is trying to show you something there? Um, but they take out, they, those two manuscripts contain apocryphal books as part of the, in the middle of the Old Testament. So, if they're the oldest and best manuscripts, why don't the new versions put these in there? I mean, if you want to say these are the oldest and best, then shouldn't these be scripture to you? Um, you see, you're not uh, you're just not consistent. The, the new version um, point of view is just not consistent. And then of course we have the Nestle Lalonde. Um, again, thanks to Brian Denlinger for pointing this out. I copied it from his website. Uh, let's see. The text shared by these two editions was op adopted internationally by Bible societies and following an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies it has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. So there you go. Your Bible is revised um, and supervised by the Vatican. New World Translation talks about um, how they use this text, basically the Nestle-Alon text, and the text that was prepared by two different Jesuits. Jesuit and Jesuit. So. I am not going to fight in the comments with people about new versions. Uh, the video I just put up before this one was on the New King James Bible, which is better in most places than almost every other new version, but it still has its problems as I showed in that video. Um, I'm not going to fight with people on the Bible version issue. I mean, if, it's, if, it's, if it wasn't the 21st century and you didn't have the resources that we have, uh, then I would feel you know, I would be more, oh, I would be, feel more sorry for people, but I really don't feel sorry for you if you truly are saved, especially, and you can't see this. I, you, you need to drop your pride. Um, I mean, isn't God trying to show you something when there's 200, over 200 new versions of the Bible? I mean, it would be more sincere if there was one new version, you know? one new version and the King James and you know, oh the English needs updated and so we have this one new version. No, we have two hundred of them. Because money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. And um God is not the author of confusion, and I don't believe God is the author of any of the new versions. And um I just the last point I wanna make is if Satan um if Satan was to make a Bible, um, hopefully nothing weird here comes up. I'm trying to find, there it was right there. Um, I just wanted a picture of this. If Satan was to make a Bible, would it look like this? I mean, do you really think it would look like that right there? Or do you think it would look more like... Um, Interesting, that came up. Mormons comes up when you type in Holy Bible. Um, or do you think it would look more like that? Satan is the master counterfeiter. And um, I really don't think that the Satanic Bible is Satan's Bible. The Satanic Bibles are the ones that are missing verses that change doctrine um, and so on and so forth. So uh, hopefully... 
that's, I've covered enough information here. If anybody would like a copy of this PDF, I can. E my email address is on the about page of my YouTube channel, and I would be glad to email this PDF to anybody if they would like it. Uh, so thanks for watching.